Morning, everybody. Welcome to the 45 minute live class. Hope everybody's doing great today. Let's get started. So, as, as always, have a chair available to you or a bench, a little pad for your knee or a couch cushion. And uh, we're going to be doing some straddle position or a frog sit today. So, if you need something for uh, your sits bones to help alleviate any unnecessary pressure or get you in a better angle, maybe a yoga block or something you can sit up on. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with just a single stick this morning, all right? So, let's go ahead and get those feet warmed up. I'm gonna take a little side profile here. Now what we're gonna do is, I've got my feet relatively close together. I'm gonna place the stick at three o'clock, so right outside the right midfoot, and I'm gonna go in my contralateral pattern, so I'm gonna step back with that right foot. I'm gonna have my right hand up just about chin level or eye level. So I'm going to push the stick into the floor about 40% tension, and I'm going to lift that front heel up. So both heels are elevated, and from here, I'm going to shift forward. So I'm driving forward onto that front leg, reaching forward with, that, with the right arm, and pull the left arm back. So you should have about 80% load on this front leg. Come back. And again, push the stick into the floor about 40% tension, shift weight forward, sink all that weight forward. You should feel this through the front of the left leg, toes are an extension, pulling that left arm back, reaching that right arm forward. One more, here we go. Breathe. Back heel is up, so don't let that back heel drop. Back leg is straight, and relax. Switch sides, so let's bring those feet in line with each other. Place the stick at nine o'clock. Left hand is just about chin level. Step back with that left foot. Take a nice big step back. Don't be dainty with that stride. So that left leg is straight. Push the stick into the floor, about 40% tension. Bring the front heel up, and now Reach forward with that left hand, pull back with the right arm. Remember, you got about 80% load on that front leg, or as much as you can tolerate. Come back. You may only be able to put maybe 40 or 50% of your load on that front leg. It's perfectly fine. Here we go. Exhale as you reach out. Load. Front heel stays nice and high. Come back up. One more. Reach. Breathe. Come back and relax. All right, now let's work that lateral line tissue a little bit. Overhand grip, hips are square, feet are about shoulder width apart. Place the stick at three o'clock. Reach over the top with that left hand. Keep those hips square. Push the hip out to the side first to nine. Extend both arms out to three. Breathe, come back. Rotate the stick slightly. And again, push the hip out to nine. Drive the stick out to three. Both arms are extending away from you. Come back up, rotate the stick slightly. And again, hip out to nine. Stick out to three, breathe, ease off, one more time, ready, push the hip out to nine, drive the stick away to, from you to three o'clock, keep those hips square, come back to center, let's switch sides. Stick is at nine o'clock, about eight to 10 inches away from the bottom of your foot, or the midfoot, sorry, reach over the top, keep those hips square, so don't let those hips rotate, drive the hips away to three, and push both arms out to nine. Back to center, rotate the stick slightly, and repeat, hips out first, stick out second. Three more, ready, rotate the stick slightly, hips out, stick out. Hips to three, stick to nine. Rotate the stick slightly, and again, hips to three, stick to nine. One more time, ready, hips to three, Stick to nine, breathe, and relax.
Okay, now let's take. I'm going to take a side profile. We're going to work uh, the sagittal plane here. Feet close together. We'll place that stick at 12 o'clock, just about six to eight inches in front of the toes. I'm going to step that left right foot back. Don't go as far back as we just did with the previous, where we activated the feet. Take about a little shorter stride than what you just did. Right hand is underneath in the middle of the stick, left hand at the top. Push the stick into the floor, 40, 50% tension with that left hand. Drive that right hand forward. Split the hips. So you're pushing your right, your left knee forward and your right heel back. Ease off. Ready? And again, push the right hand forward and the left knee forward. Drive the right heel back towards the floor, keeping that right leg straight. Reflexive pull on that top arm, not an active pull. Ease off. And again, pushing that left hand down. Push the right hand forward. We're not seeing how far we can flex the stick. All we're doing right now is activating our posterior and anterior performance lines. And relax. Let's switch sides. So let's switch that hand position. Left hand is on the bottom in the middle of the stick. Take that left foot, step back. Left heel stays up nice and high. Right hand at the top, just about top of the head level. Push the stick into the floor, 40, 50% tension with that left, right hand. Now with that left hand, gently push forward. Now I'm driving my right knee forward, keeping the front heel flat, and I'm driving the back heel down towards the floor, keeping that back leg straight. Ease off, and again, push. Remember that stick is just there to activate those oblique slings and those tissues. Ease off, ready, push. Front heel stays flat. You're working the dorsiflexion of that front ankle. Ease off, and one more time. Push, bottom hand drives forward. So active push with the bottom, reflexive pull with the top, and relax. Okay. Talking about dorsiflexion, let's work that dorsiflexion right now. So let's grab both sticks. If you don't have two sticks, just use one. You're gonna do one at a time. So I'm gonna take a little side profile here so you can see. I'm gonna place my sticks right on the top of the foot. So right about where the base of the toes meet the foot. Okay. From here, I'm gonna reach my hands up just about eye level. I'm going to push both sticks into the floor at about 50, 60% in the top of my feet, sorry. Now from here, with my left foot first, I'm going to push the stick up to the ceiling. So I'm working the dorsiflexion, so I'm working all that anterior tissue which pulls that foot up. Do not let your butt go back and do not go into hyperextension at the knee. Make sure you're sourcing that from the ankle. Knees off, now switch feet. So there should be no position change of the hips or the knee. That should stay completely still. Down and again. Drive that left foot up. You should feel your anterior tib or the shin muscles, the tissues along the front of the shin. Ease off, right side, push. If you get a little cramping in the bottom of your foot or the top of your foot, just ease off as always. Walk around a little bit and then pick back up where we're, where we're at. Okay, one more time each side. Drive that left foot up. Remember, you're pushing down in the top of that left foot, about 50, 60% tension. Back down, one more. No change in the hip position. Keep the butt underneath you and relax. Nicely done, good. Okay, let's get some thoracic rotation in. So we're gonna set our feet about shoulder width apart. Let's place that stick right, in, right at, next to the little toe. Right hand at the top, right about the top of the head level. Keep that arm at that three o'clock spot. And now push the stick into the floor about 50, 40, 50% tension and hinge. Sink the hips straight back, breathe. 
Don't let that top hand slide down. That top hand stays fixed. It's at a fixed point. Now take that left hand and reach across to your three o'clock position. Don't shift your hips though. You keep your hips centered. And now reach as far as you can. Ease off, come back to your center, and again, pushing the stick into the floor, keeping your back nice and flat. Reach as far as you can with that left arm. Reach, breathe. Come back, and one more time, ready? Driving that stick into the floor, reach with that left hand. Try to reach a little bit farther. Don't shift the weight in the hips. Keep the weight centered. Back to center and relax. Switch sides. So now we're going to place the stick right next to the left little toe. Left hand is just about top of the head level. Keep that hand at 9 o'clock position. Push the stick into the floor. 50-60% tension and hinge. Sink your hips straight back. You're going to feel that opening through this left anterior arm line. And now reach with that right hand across to nine o'clock. Reach. Don't shift your weight in your hips though. Keep your weight centered. Ease back. And again, reach. Breathe. Bring it back. One more time. Reach. Breathe. Bring it back and relax. Nice. Okay, now let's get those shoulders moving, but we're going to toss those legs in. So let's go into that little lunge with the kayak this morning. So stick is a sternum level, parallel with the floor. Make sure your elbows are extended so the arms are straight. Let's split that right foot back. Back heel stays up. From here, start to drop straight down. Just like an elevator, not going forward like an escalator. Just drop straight down, bing, down to the parking garage, hover that back knee, and now start to kayak. Forward kayaking. You want to feel the shoulder blades gliding along the rib cage. Full inhale, full exhale. Keep that back knee down, hover it. Breathe. Feel the shoulder blades gliding along the rib cage. And relax. Let's switch feet, and on this foot, we're going to go in reverse. So, left foot back, back heel stays up, stick is parallel with the floor at sternum level, and once again, Hit that elevator button, ding, and drop straight down. Ready? And reverse. So we're going into that backstroke. The posterior arm line should be working nice and hard right now. Pulling that stick apart reflexively through the motion. Your hips should be working to keep you up. Breathe. and relax. All right. Now, let's get those hips working a little bit more. Two sticks. If you have just a single stick, then you're only doing one, one, angle, one of these motions at a time. Feet together. Sticks at 11 o'clock and one o'clock. Hands are chest level. Remember, have the bottom of the sticks angled in towards you. So when we tell you to push down on the stick, it's going to follow that natural arm line drive. All right? Ready? 50% tension. Push. Drive the sticks into the floor. Feel your lats engage. Breathe. Bring your right hip up into flexion. Your right foot is just about 8 to 10 inches off the floor. The upper arm bone stays, or the upper leg bone, sorry, stays equal distance between both sticks. Internal rotation, tap the right stick. External, tap the left. Internal, 
external. Now what we're going to do, when we go to internal, we're going to climb up the stick. Back to external. Back to internal, climb the stick. External, one more. Internal, climb the stick. Back to external. And now we're going down. Internal, external. So you're descending down the stick. And now let's climb back up. As we go internal, external, we're climbing the stick. And now climb back down, descend back down. And relax. Remember, the upper leg bone stays equal distance between the sticks, so you're not abducting or adducting. So look at my upper leg. This is abduction, adduction. We want the upper leg to stay still. Okay, here we go. 50, 60% tension into the floor. Push. Bring your left hip up into flexion. So your left foot is just about eight inches off the floor. Let's go internal rotation, external. So get that first couple at the same level. All right, now let's start to climb. So every time you tap, you're climbing up a little bit higher. And now back down just like you're going down that ladder. Let's climb back up. You have that visual feedback so you can see where your upper leg bone is. Let's go back down. One more time, back up. Remember, if you have a problem tapping one of the sticks, then move just that stick a little bit closer to your center line. Back down and relax. So for people that are new to this, if I have problems with external rotation and I have to adduct over to touch that stick, then just simply pull that in closer to you so that you can actually achieve that range of motion. All right? Okay, now let's take those sticks a little bit wider. So we got them at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Hands haven't changed position. They're still at chest level. We're going to push those sticks in the floor about 50, 60% tension. Flats are engaged, locking it down. Let's bring that right hip up into flexion. Now we're going to abduct out. So push the whole leg out to the side. So the midfoot, the outside of the right midfoot, is pushing against the inside of the right stick. Your upper and lower leg bones are stacked on top of each other. I add that little tension into the stick and slide it up. So we're increasing that flexion angle on that right hip. Slide back down. When you feel the grip on the bottom of the foot or the sole of the foot, slide back up. Keep your left leg nice and straight. So no flexion in that left knee. No leaning back either. That left glute should be talking to you right now. Back down. One more. Back up. Back down. And relax. Switch sides. Here we go. 60% tension into the floor. Bring that left hip up into flexion. Abduct over. Push. And now slide up. Slide down. Slide up, slide down, one more, slide up, slide down, and relax. Now let's do the opposite. We're going to pull in towards our midline. Here we go. Ready? Push, drive those sticks down into the floor, bring that right hip up into flexion, pull that leg to the outside of the stick. So your instep is pushing in against the stick, upper and lower leg bones are still stacked, and slide up. Slide down. When you feel the grip on the sole of the foot, then slide back up. Slide down. One more. Slide up. Slide down. Let's switch sides. Here we go. 60% tension. Push. Bring the left hip up into flexion. Bring your foot to the outside. So that instep is pushing against the stick. Slide up, slide down, slide up, 
slide down, one more, slide up, and slide down. Nicely done. All right, let's put one stick up. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a roll pattern on the floor. So we're gonna use the glutes and the oblique sling to do some rolling, all right? We're gonna use the stick to help amplify and get those posterior and anterior slings to start firing a little bit more. So you're gonna need a base of a wall and you're gonna anchor that one end of the stick into the base of the floor. So let's go ahead and lay down on your back. So this is my setup. So right now I've got my right leg straight, my left knee is bent, my left hand and right hand are both over grip, overhand grip. So make have your left hand right in line with your left shoulder. So it should be straight up towards the ceiling. And then your right hand grips right about where the sticker is. So from here, what you're gonna do with that left hand, with both hands is push the stick into the base of the floor. So you're creating that downward angle on that drive. Now take that left foot, push it into the floor, roll your glutes. So you're gonna roll the pelvis to your right towards the wall. And now with that right hand, pull the stick in towards you. Ease off. Good, okay, ready? So we're driving both hands, using the stick to drive the stick into the base of the wall. Take that left foot, push it into the floor, roll towards the wall through the glute, and now pull that stick towards you with the right hand. Ease off, ready? Let's go three more reps, here we go. Push the stick into the floor, let's go about 70% tension. Drive it up, roll. Breathe, pull that stick towards you with that right hand. Ease off. Let's go two more. Here we go, ready? Push, roll, and pull with that right hand as you roll. Ease off. One more time, here we go, ready? Push, roll. Driving with that left glute, pulling with that right arm and relax. So essentially what you just did is a single leg bridge, glute bridge, but we added some rotation to it, which really when you apply any type of bridge to real life, you're typically gonna be rolling with it too, all right? There, let's switch sides. So, stick is in the base of the wall. Overhand grip on both hands. Right arm is just perpendicular to the right shoulder. Right in line. Left leg is straight. So push it out at a little bit of an angle. Right knee is bent with the right with the sole of the foot on the floor. Push the stick into the floor. So I'm pushing down at that angle, about 60% tension. Take that right foot, push the foot into the floor, roll the glute towards the wall, and now pull with that left hand. Remember, let your head come up so you can see where you're rolling. Ease off. Here we go, ready? Push and roll. You should feel that right glute working hard. Ease off. Let's go three more, ready? Push and roll. So you're pushing with the right glute and pulling with the left arm. Ease off. Two more, ready? Push and roll. Ease off. One more, last one, ready? 70, 80%, push, drive, and roll. Breathe. And relax. Nicely done. Okay, Whew. we're gonna stay on the floor. We're gonna do some core work in this seated position right here. So we're gonna keep the knees flexed, hips are flexed. 
You're gonna dorsiflex those ankles right now. Place the stick across the quads parallel with the floor. Take the hands pretty wide, not too wide. I don't want the pinkies off the stick, but just take it about a few inches wider than shoulder width. Chest up nice and tall. So imagine that someone has a string and is pulling your head and spine straight up to the ceiling. From here, so you're promoting your sternum forward, no flexion, and now push the stick down towards the floor. 50% tension. So as you push the stick down, your torso should be going up. Ease off. That's a nice one, huh? Rotate the stick slightly. Here we go, ready? And push. Driving the hands down towards the floor, pushing that stick into the quads. The shoulders are going down. Torso is nice and tall. Ease off. We got 20 more of these. Just kidding. Okay, ready? Here we go. Push. Ease off. Let's go one more. Ready? Here we go. Last one. Ready? This is it. Ready? And push. Driving that stick into the quads, torso up nice and tall, a little bit of a lean back. Breathe. And relax. Whew. Oh. All that core work I did last night is starting to pay me back right now. All right, take a little breather. Okay, so we'll be back in the floor in just a little bit to do some straddle. Well, let's go to our hanging position, all right? So single arm hang, feet close together. Let's place that stick at three o'clock. Let's down regulate. So control your respirations. Nice, slow inhale. Nice, slow, full exhale. Okay. Step back with that right foot. Back heel stays up. I'll take a little side profile here for you. If you're new to this and you don't think the stick is going to hold you, bring your left hand across sternum level and grab that stick. That left hand is there to keep that stick in so that you understand that, that stick's going to hold you. Just like an elevator, hit that button, ding, and drop straight down. So you have that right arm line carrying your weight. Once you know the stick is going to hold you, whether you're using our stick or PVC that you got at the store, once you're set that this stick is going to hold, then just release the left hand. Breathe. Remember, hanging is really good for overall, overall shoulder health. And now at 30% tension, push the stick into the floor with the right hand. You're going to feel that right shoulder blade pack down. You're going to feel these tissues kicking in a little bit more. Ease off. Give that grip a little bit of rest. Okay, remember grip strength is really important. Okay, here we go. Drop, ding, hit that elevator button, drop straight down towards the floor. Remember, I'm not going forward and I'm not leaning back. Just like an elevator, dropping straight down. So I'm bending that back knee to let gravity do what gravity does best, pull you down. Push the stick into the floor, about 30% tension with that right hand. Breathe. Now let's add a little bit of rotation to that. Let's take that left hand and reach behind you to six o'clock. And as you reach behind you to six, let the right hand come across your body. Keep your hips square though. Breathe. Come back to center, ease off. Let's do that one more time. Here we go, ready? Drop. Push the stick into the floor, 30% tension, and now reach for six. Keep your hips facing forward. 
So you're gonna feel this left adductor working to keep that hip from turning. Back to center, and now let's switch sides. So the stick is at nine o'clock. I'm gonna reach that left hand up, grab that stick with the rope grip. If you need to, once again, bring that right hand across. If you're used to this, you know the stick is gonna hold you, you don't have to do that. That's just for newbies, all right? For people that are just new to this. Okay, ready? Drop like an elevator. Breathe. Nice slow inhale. Full exhale. As you exhale, compress that stomach, pull that pelvic floor up towards your rib cage. Now 30% tension, push that stick into the floor. Feel more tension into the shoulder area. Feel the shoulder blade pulling down towards your back pocket. Ease off tension. Readjust your hand grip. Give that hand a little bit of rest. Now we have two rotational reps. Here we go, ready? Drop straight down. Push the stick into the floor, 30% tension. Take that right hand, reach forward, and now reach across your, or past your body, and rotate back to your six. Reach for your six. Keep your hips facing forward. This right adductor should be working to keep that hip from rotating. The left hand comes across your body just a little bit. Come back to center, ease off. Remember, this adductor prevents this from taking place. All right, so lock that in. If you get some cramping in there, once again, ease out of it, and then pick it back up. Here we go, ready? Drop, push the stick into the floor, 30% tension. Take that right hand and reach behind you to six. Breathe. Full inhale, full exhale. Come back to center and relax. Good. Okay. Now, let's go down to the floor. We're going to do a frog sit and then we're gonna do a straddle. If you can't get into a straddle, then you're gonna stay through the frog sit for two rounds, all right? Okay, now the seat. A nice thing to try when you're getting up and down off the floor is try not to use your hands to get up and down off the floor. You have the stick, you can use the stick as a little bit of a stabilizer if you need it, but it's something you can play around with, all right? But stay in your, in your in a somewhat safe zone. Don't get too crazy with it, all right? Here's our frog sit position. Hips are flexed, knees are flexed. Place the stick under the balls of the feet. Overhand grip on the stick. Grab the stick with your toes. So as you grab the stick with your toes, you're gonna feel the feet light up a little bit. From here, exhale and create a nice tall spine. Somebody's pulling that spine straight up to the ceiling and now push the knees away from each other. You're creating tension into the, full into the whole body by creating that tall spine, you're driving the stick into the feet even more. The feet are pushing back a little bit harder than they first were. You're pushing the knees away from each other to open up that groin adductor region. Ease off. Now if you can, take your feet a little bit wider if that felt good, if it felt comfortable. All right? This is a great regression for people that can't get into a full straddle. We also really hit the adductor a little bit more in this position than we actually do in the straddle. Okay, ready? Here we go. Grab the stick with your toes. Nice tall spine. Lengthening, remember we're not arching the back, 
We're lengthening the spine. That is two different things. All right. So I shouldn't see any arching or the sternums or the, or the ribs flaring up. I should see a lengthening. You're trying to push the spine away from the floor and now drive your knees out to the side. Breathe. Ease off tension. And let's go one more time. If you can, take your feet a little bit wider. All right? If you take your feet wider, then take your hands wider also. Okay, here we go. We're gonna add a little bit extra to this in just a second. Okay, ready? Grab the stick with your toes. Nice, tall spine. And now push those knees away from each other. If you've taken your feet a little bit wider and you're pushing those knees out, you're feeling more opening to that adductor groin line, all right? And now shorten the stick. With the hands, you're trying to shorten. It's a six foot stick, so you're trying to make it five and a half feet. And as you do that, you'll feel the adductors automatically create more tension. Breathe. Nice tall spine, you're shortening the stick, you're pushing the knees away from each other, and relax. Whew. Take a second, all right? Now, if you can, go into that full straddle. If you have problems with this, then you're gonna stay and just go through another round of the frog sit, all right? Okay, place the stick underneath the balls of the feet, Okay, tall spine. If you need a bolster, if you can get your legs out but it's not really all that comfortable, take a bolster or a, a, a elevated platform and put it under your sits bones to make that a little bit more comfortable for you, all right? Okay, grab the stick with the balls of your feet, wide grip with the hand. Create that tall spine. As soon as you create that tall spine, you should feel your adductors light right up. And now with the hands, try to shorten the stick. So you're trying to shorten that stick at about 30% tension. And as you do that, you feel more tension build up into the adductor line. Breathe. Ease off tension. Okay, ready? And again, nice tall spine. Grab the stick with your toes. Remember, your toes are just stubby little versions of your fingers. Toes should be able to have a lot of function. Unfortunately, most people's toes, including my own, don't have as much as they really could have. Shorten that stick about 30% tension. Breathe, full inhale, full exhale, shortening that stick, ease off. All right, if you can, take your feet a little bit wider, just a little bit, don't have to be very much. An eighth of an inch is, can be a considerable amount of increase, all right? Okay, so now we're gonna add a little extra something. So for the people at home doing the straddle of the frog sit still, you're still gonna do what we add in right here, okay? Here we go. Nice tall spine. Shorten the stick, about 30% tension. Now, you're gonna shorten the stick the entire time regardless of what I tell you to do with the feet. So you're always still pushing in on that stick with those hands and you're always still creating that tall spine. Now with your feet, try to shorten your stick. You're trying to pull that stick short with your toes. You're gonna to feel the adductors light up even more. Now we're bringing some real massive neural drive to those adductors in this position. And now here comes the super fun part. Pull the stick apart. Try to lengthen the stick with your toes. Now you should feel your outer hips. If we can increase the strength of the outer hips pulling away from your center, as a byproduct, we actually increase your midline. Okay, ready? Shorten the stick with your feet. Strengthening those end range positions. Pull apart on the stick, pull. 
You should feel the outer hips. If you get any cramping, once again, just ease out of it and we'll go back into it. One more time, shorten the stick. Good old car alarms, huh? It's not my car. Okay, ready? Lengthen the stick. Breathe. And relax. Woo! Bring your legs back together. Take a rest. All right? So remember, when we stretch, we don't want to be passive. If you're passive in your stretches, there's other things you could be doing that are a lot more productive. All right? Okay. Come back up. So when you're stretching, always add some activation there because we don't want to rent our ranges of motion. We want to own our ranges of motion. Okay, let's go into a little thoracic flow. Stick behind the back. Okay. We're going to go sagittal plane this time. So let's split those feet. Let's go right foot back, left leg in front. Get a good split in those hips. So don't be dainty with that split. Okay, shift weight forward onto that left leg. Bring the right hand down, set the stick on the floor, and pull apart on the stick. So you're lengthening the stick. Back leg is straight. You're keeping your head focused straight ahead. So you're looking down at 12 o'clock. Pull the floor apart with your feet. So that means your right foot is driving back. Your left foot is pushing forward. And you're still pulling apart on that stick. Nice slow inhale. Nice slow exhale. Ease off. And now let's bring our feet together. Let's switch sides. Left foot back. Nice big step, so don't be dainty. Shift weight forward onto that right leg. Bring that left hand down and across the body. When you get to your end range, place the stick on the floor. Your head is looking straight down at 12 o'clock. Pull apart on that stick, pull. And now split the floor, try to lengthen it. So your left foot is driving back, your right foot is pushing forward. Full inhale, full exhale. Remember, try to pull that pelvic floor up towards your rib cage as you exhale. Ease off. Let's go one more time to each side. So we're going to step back with the right foot. Back heel stays up. Bring the right side down in front. Put it on the floor when you're in your end range. Pull apart on the stick. And now pull apart on the floor. Your right foot is pushing back. Your left foot is driving forward. Breathe. Try to look over your right shoulder a little bit more to open up that left side of the neck. Ease off. One more to the other side. Here we go. Step back with the left foot. Bring the left end of the stick forward, place it on the floor, split those hips. Pull apart on the stick and split. Left foot's driving back, right foot's pushing forward, and look over the left shoulder to open up the right side of the neck. Breathe. Remember, pull apart on that stick. Right hand should be pushing up towards the ceiling. Left hand should be pushing down towards the floor. Ease off. And relax. Great work today, everybody. Thank you for joining us again. As always, check out our YouTube. New podcasts are coming out, so please check those out. Please subscribe. Uh, we'll see you guys here same time Thursday morning. Until then, everybody out there, be safe. Be good to each other. Peace.